Things are getting beautiful and ugly in the world of Magic the Gathering. Interrupting here for a second just to let you know two things. One, because of all the changing of the lights and everything, the light was all massively dusty. So you can actually see the dust on my shirt. It looks terrible, just terrible, I know. And I forgot to, at the end of the video, mention my new patron. So I'm actually going to give him a shout out right here at the beginning. Thanks, Sean Keebler Powell, for joining my Patreon, buddy. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. Trying out some new lighting scenarios to see what's going on. Any of you who watched yesterday's video will have seen that ran into some serious technical issues with the lighting and everything. So we're trying something different. The lights are really in my eyes right now, in all honesty. It's a little bit of a hassle, but I'm hoping that that'll sort out the problem with the green screen. Who knows? I'm so technically inept that it may actually just lead to other problems. But either way, if all is going according to plan, then behind me should be some really beautiful Throne of Eldraine artwork. Honestly, the video that I had wanted to release first was going to be a Throne of Eldraine artwork video. When I said things are getting beautiful and ugly, the beautiful is the artwork, because honestly, Throne of Eldraine's artwork, many feet, it is beautiful. There's so much to enjoy, and I do want to go on an art cruise with you guys, but unfortunately for me, one of the recent announcements, specifically of collector packs, have kind of overshadowed everything for me, and left me with, admittedly, a bad taste in my mouth. Now, this isn't gonna be like the videos that I did back in the day where I went all boss monster and I ranted and ranted about the master sets, okay? I am going to remain calm and I'm gonna basically explain my concerns and disappointment. Now, bear in mind while you watch this video that this is indeed the opinion of one man who started Magic way back in the day and you are allowed, you are, I don't know if they've told you this, but you're allowed to like different things than me. You don't have to go flying off into orbit, screaming your head off about it. I mean, I, I doubt mentioning this is even going to stop you from doing it. But either way, you don't have to lose your minds if you disagree with me. I know this is the internet, but we are allowed to have calm discussions as well. So, let us talk about the three types of booster packs that Magic the Gathering is now going to be offering and why I am unhappy with the direction that Magic the Gathering is taking in some ways. So the first booster pack we're going to talk about is the standard issue booster pack that the majority of you are already familiar with. Now I do have some viewers who don't really follow Magic the Gathering specifically and are more just here to watch a ridiculous human being flail about. So just to get you up to speed, a booster pack is 15 random magic cards. You get one rare or mythic rare, you get three uncommon cards, and the rest of your pack will be made up of common cards. One out of every three of these booster packs will have a special foil edition, some people call them holographic, however you want to describe it, a special premium foil edition of one of the cards randomly instead of a common. So that's basically the breakdown of what one of these booster packs is. Now these packs are now going forwards going to be called draft packs. And these for the entire history of Magic, these have been the booster packs. These have just been called booster packs for eternity. Now recently they also introduced theme boosters. Now personally, I think theme boosters are trash. I've picked up a few of them. The idea behind a theme booster is you can get a theme booster that's keyed to green, red, one of the different colors of Magic the Gathering, and instead of getting random cards from all the different colors, what you get is something that's specifically tied to that color. So if you've got a red theme booster, that means that every card available in that pack will be usable in a red deck. It doesn't automatically mean every card is a red card. You may get some artifacts, you may get some colorless lands that uh, can also go on, but everything, if you were just playing red, everything in the theme booster could be used in it. Now, theme boosters cost roughly twice what a regular booster pack does, and it has one rare or mythic rare in it, and then a whole bunch of commons and are uncommons, basically like almost, 
It's basically like two boosters crammed together, but you have a very small chance of getting that second rare. So you're guaranteed one rare or mythic rare with a 10% chance of getting another rare or mythic rare. It's listed in the description of the odds as 1.1 rare slash mythic rare, which means one out of every 10 of these theme packs will come with the second rare or mythic. Now these, honestly, they feel like garbage that's directed towards children. It's a lot of what's not, well, basically once we talk about the other pack, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about when I, when I say draft chaff, because that's part of what actually bothers me about the way they're marketing this collector's pack, because the collector's pack is really the thrust of this video. The meat of this video is talking about the collector pack, because draft packs are nothing new, just calling them draft packs is new. Before they were the all, they were just called booster packs, and then they came along with these theme boosters, which I do genuinely think are not a good product, but whatever if you want if you want you just start it out and you grab them sure maybe you can have some fun with them you could put some lands in them and try and build a deck out of them i actually did that once over on my twitch account you're by the way you're welcome to come and hang out with me on twitch i did it once on my twitch account where i took a theme booster and i put lands into it and tried playing it and it's a it's a train wreck it's a mess it's a thousand times worse than playing one of the planeswalker decks and the planeswalker decks are admittedly very weak so let's move into collector boosters. This is where things get ugly. U-G-L-Y, give me your cash, I'm not gonna lie. That's what collector pack boosters are. Now, for those of you who don't know, the collector boosters are premium edition boosters where you're going to get just basically rares, mythic rares, and foils. You're going to get commons and uncommons in the packs, but they are all going to be foil premium edition. And on top of that, these collector packs will have certain styles of cards that you can only get from collector's packs. The difference from these and regular cards is, by Wizards' own admission, the difference is the aspect ratio, where they take the art and instead of it stopping at the borders, it stretches all the way out to the borders. So that is what collector's edition packs are, basically. They're like souped up magic packs where they have taken out all of the draft chaff. Now I mentioned before we will get to draft chaff. So here's what draft chaff is. The idea behind draft boosters, which were never called draft boosters before, is that they designed the majority of the set around the draft format. And the draft format is one where you take a booster pack, you open it, you select one card from that booster pack, and then you hand that pack off to a person beside you. And at the same time, you are handed another booster pack. You take that booster pack and you select a card from that and you do that with three booster packs so that at the end of the entire draft you have selected 45 different cards. So instead of just having the random contents of boosters, you selected specific cards and you build your deck around that. Now because these booster packs are built under the draft concept, it means that the majority of commons and uncommons in these Magic the Gathering sets are actually garbage cards they're actually just okay these cards aren't very good individually on their own a lot of the cards never get played by anybody outside of the draft format so when it comes to building your own magic decks the majority of these cards are useless out of each set there are actually only a handful of commons and commons out of hundreds of cards there are maybe four or five that actually matter a lot of them are repeating the same concept. Here we have a 1-3 Pegasus that when you attack with it gives one of your creatures flying. Here we have a 1-3 Flying Dinosaur that when it attacks give one of your creatures flying. Here we have a 2-2 Pegasus that when it attacks gives one of your creatures flying. This sort of repetition, in fact sometimes they repeat the exact same card. They don't change anything about it. They don't change the creature type, they don't change power and toughness. It's literally an identical card. And they do this over and over and over. Now in the marketing for the collector's edition, they said the idea behind this, what, what they're trying to say is, we wanna give our players agency. That's, that's the, the key word that they use. They want agency, which is really giving the ability to choose. So they're saying, you know what, draft, they're calling the draft packs now. Original boosters are now being called draft packs. And they say, 
Well, the draft packs have the flaws of having a lot of awful cards that are designed for draft, and there's a lot of repetition and useless comments. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but that's essentially what they said. To market this collector's pack, they said, hey, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to remove all of the garbage that we put in draft packs. And remember, this is the majority of each set. The majority of each set is made up of this trash under the guise of good draft environment. They did the same thing with the master sets where they charged a much higher price for them. And then they turned around and went, oh, we're balancing it for draft. We're optimizing for draft. It's just an excuse to save a bunch of money on development and sell us garbage cards because otherwise they would have to make the set smaller. There's no way that they could make a whole bunch of amazing cards for absolutely every set. They would run into power creep problems. So instead, they intentionally keep making what are mostly dead cards. The majority of magic cards that are made now are never meant to see play outside of a draft environment, which is absolutely insane. This is something that I had actually talked about in a number of different videos. So Wizards of the Coast goes, we want to give you agency. We understand that there are collectors out there who only care about the harder to get cards and they don't want this garbage. So we're making packs for you that are specifically garbage free, mostly. I mean, it seems still seems like they'll have like some of the garbage. If there's garbage rares in the set, which there always is, there will be some garbage rares in these collector edition sets. But the real problem comes in when you look at the price. The price of a regular Magic Booster Pack is about $4 US. Now these collector packs are going to come out, what they said when they announced it, they're going to be somewhere between $20 to $25 US. So they go, you know, we recognize that there's a problem for our customers with the whole, the whole draft booster experience where you end up with a bunch of garbage you don't want. So instead of finding a way to actually make a better product and make it more accessible, what we're going to do is we're going to sell you a product that costs anywhere from five to seven times the regular cost of a booster pack in an attempt to bilk more money out of the customers. That, that's really what's going on. Magic the Gathering is becoming more and more and more expensive and not in the way that you would expect a gradual increase with inflation. Of course, everything becomes more expensive. That's the nature of society. That seems to be absolutely unavoidable. And I'm not railing against that. But this level of greed, Wizards of the Coast has signaled that this is going to continue. We had the master sets that when they flopped, they said, okay, how do we extract more money from people? They come along with the mythic editions and the mythic editions are gross to me because these are boxes where they're turning around and saying, we basically just want to sell you eight masterpiece planeswalkers. They used to put masterpieces into booster packs as a way to create an extra higher level, super, super, super rare, to push pack sales so people buy more and more packs. But the problem was with the invocations is they, the invocation slash masterpieces is they had a diminishing return situation where over time, the value of all the masterpieces were decreasing. And while Wizards of the Coast officially disavows the secondary market, when it comes to the internal decisions they make, they very much pay attention to the secondary market. So because the masterpieces were decreasing in value, they decided to discontinue adding them into boosters because it's not about making a better product for us. It's about making us crack more packs and spend more money at the end of the day. And it's perfectly fine for a corporation to want to make money. That makes sense. It's not a hippie commune where I expect them to give out the cards, but they don't do things in our best interest. They stop putting masterpieces in packs because they started being worth less money on the secondary market. Not because people didn't want them, people very much liked them, but because they weren't going to act as the vector they wanted to have us crack more and more and more packs. It's like the Mythic Rarity. When they originally created Mythic Rarity, they told us that it was for big, flashy, impressive cards, not for tournament, not for tournament level cards and not for lands. Now we live in a future where when they reprint Cavern of Souls, it comes out as a mythic. You look at the mythics, a bunch of the mythics are required to compete in standard in most cases. There are some side elements where you go, oh, but what about the red burn deck? Yeah, they, they give you one option in the game, one option in the game where you're not required to buy a bunch of expensive mythics. But either way, slowly but surely, 
All the different parts of the game have been warping to make booster packs more expensive and less of a deal for us to just keep driving us to crack more and more booster packs and give them more and more money. And they recognize and fully acknowledge that there is a bunch of draft garbage in regular booster packs. And their answer isn't to make regular booster packs better. It's to create special collector, collector edition boosters where they force you to pay a much higher price to acquire them. Now, obviously, nobody's forced to buy them, but there is a, a heavy incentive towards buying them when there are special edition of cards that are only available in there. They put all the premium editions in there and they put it at such a high price. Why do they put it at such a high price? To keep secondary market prices high. Because by having secondary market prices high, it creates a certain level of prestige to the game. I was in a live stream yesterday watching a Twitch streamer who is aware that I have a Magic the Gathering channel. And he has recently gotten in to physical magic. And he was excitedly telling me about what he had opened, and he was excitedly telling me about what his friend had opened. What did he what did he choose to talk about? He chose to talk about the dollar value of particular cards. The value of magic cards gives it a certain prestige level. So Wizards of the Coast is going along and doing everything they can to keep these prices high. That's why you see the mythic boxes, which are intentionally just a way to sell you really expensive masterpiece versions. And then Modern Horizons comes along, and Modern Horizons really signaled to me Wizards Greed, because Modern Horizons was touted as Time Spiral 2, where it's supposed to be a nostalgic nod to Magic's past. This set was put out at twice the regular price of normal boosters, with no real justification for why it was double costed. There's, there actually is no real reason for it. When you look at the artwork, the majority of the artwork for Modern Horizons is actually slush art. If you guys don't know what slush art is, it's when they get a piece of artwork that they can't use, it goes in the slush file. And there can be a number of reasons that the art is unusable. Either the art doesn't actually match the card. For example, in Modern Horizons, there is a green black land. The art from that green black horizon land was originally meant to be used on a swamp about eight years ago but they decided that it didn't feel like a swamp, so they put it in the slush file. So they have all this artwork that they've already paid for and haven't used. And with Modern Horizons, it's not like they have to do a whole bunch of world building and get art specifically designed to that world. So they pull a bunch of slush art out of the file and they design cards to go with the art, kind of. And that's why a bunch of cards don't quite feel like they fit with the artwork. So. They're already using artwork they've paid for. They didn't have to pay extra money to get artwork designed for this set. This is already paid for. It requires less work to design Modern Horizons than it does to create a set like Ravnica, where they have to design the entire world. And Ravnica, obviously, they've reused it multiple times. But I mean, the first time they designed Ravnica, they have to make sure that everything fits into that world. They have to concept the world. They have to do all this work when it comes to creating a world. They didn't have to do that with Modern Horizons and yet they charged double the price and they changed the name of it from Time Spiral 2 to Modern Horizons because they knew that based on the whole concept of the modern master sets and all that, that people were used to paying higher prices for sets with modern in the name. I genuinely believe that they made this set modern legal as an afterthought. And even as a double price set, Modern Horizons is full of draft garbage. So going forwards, are we going to see a compilation of these insanely expensive collector's booster packs combined with these other products? Would Modern Horizons have a collector's edition where the booster packs are $50 a piece? Are we looking at them doing specific like mythic edition collector's box sets? The mythic edition box sets are already 250 US dollars and people were so rabid to buy them that there's now a lawsuit that is ongoing because Wizards of the Coast was not able to deliver the amount that people ordered. All this huge fallout over the Mythic Edition where they're having to send out foil sheets and accidentally sending out toothbrushes and other things. But either way, there is a certain subset of the magic population that is willing to buy these expensive products. And it's fine. It's fine that they're creating a range of products, but the problem for me feels like they're moving more and more 
to create these gigantic whaling products where they're basically pushing the baseline up to the point where Magic is going to become a rich man only game. I really do feel like we're moving into the realm of being priced out of the game that we play. And for somebody who doesn't have a lot of money, it's actually, it's a, it's a frustrating situation to find yourself in where you're excited about the new set because I am super excited about Throne of Eldraine. The artwork for it is absolutely gorgeous. It's breathtaking. There's so much beautiful flavor. And I'm going to do a video talking about what a hit Throne of Eldraine seems like it's going to be. It actually gives me echoes of the days of Legends, okay? Back in the day, the original Legend set, Throne of Eldraine tickles that my ribs in the same way that that Legend set did. Now, I'll give that a whole, a whole video, but my issue is that Wizards of the Coast literally only seems to care about taking our money. And people, when I say that, will come along and say, oh, that's all corporations are supposed to care about. And that's not true. It's okay for corporations to care about their customers as well. A long, long time ago, back in the days of like fourth edition, Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, had a Magic the Gathering set printed where the card quality was abysmal. And they realized it was terrible. So do you know what they did? They burned the cards. They destroyed the cards and had them redone to a higher quality standard. Now, we don't see that nowadays. When they did the master sets, they were costed at triple the price of regular booster packs, roughly. And the card quality was abysmal. They no longer care about delivering us a quality product. It genuinely seems like all they care about is extracting as much money as possible. And the collector's edition boosters feel like a genuine slap in the face where the way to market them is to denigrate the draft boosters, which are what they have been foisting on us for 25 years. They've been progressively making the booster packs worse and worse. The mathematical data out there to prove track printing exists, and for those of you who don't know what track printing is, it's a printing process that Wizards uses to ensure that you get fewer of certain cards and more of other cards. This has been documented in the past. This is something they do. They intentionally make certain cards scarcer. And now they're turning around and going, yeah, we have these packs where it's harder to get the cards you want. And on top of that, they're full of draft garbage. But we've got a solution. Pay us seven times the amount. Pay us 700% of regular booster, booster prices. And for me, I, I find it to be disgusting and disheartening. And I honestly... I don't know what more to say about that. I want to give a special shout out to my patrons and channel members. Thank you very much for supporting what I do. I appreciate it very much. If you're not already a channel member or a patron, I encourage you, now's the time to get on board because old Papa Perp's not even going to be able to afford a booster pack at this rate. If you want to keep Papa Perp in the cardboard rectangles, then by all means, hop on my Patreon. That's the best way to do it. And remember, my friends, together we are the sixth color of magic.